All right, here we are at our 1994 Lakeview. This is a 15 by 68 foot aluminum hull houseboat for sale. And I am standing on about a 12 by 80 foot dock that's included with this one. It's got about a 12 by 50 foot covered patio on it. Now this dock is in need of some repairs and some boards being replaced. We've got two lifetime sheds included. It's a gas grill and a smoker. And we also have a wash and dryer, Whirlpool washer, Admiral dryer. And there's one of those boards that do need to be replaced. There are several of those. Now the houseboat's a four bedroom, one and a half bath. It's a 15, 15 feet wide body by 68 feet long. Powered by a single Merc Cruiser inboard outboard engine. And this mooring location where we're at is also transferable. That means this houseboat and dock can stay right here where it's currently located. It's very centrally located. And in, in one of the very popular areas of the lake, one of the uh, more popular marine harbors that uh, we get, we do have a uh, swim boarding ladder right up here off the dock. And of course, we're here for our video walkthrough tour. As always, you'll be able to find the current asking price as well as more information on this one on our website, which is at yournewboat.com or www.yournewboat.com. Now, for your convenience, we will have a direct link for this one uh, down in the video description. It'll take you right to the listing for this at our website, so you can find it easily. And, of course, our contact information is going to be all over the place once you do make it there. You'll be able to contact us by phone, by text, and by email, whatever is most convenient for, we, for you. But we do always like to remind our viewers, if you do send us an email, please make sure you check your spam folder. Our replies generally uh, are sent back to um, our customers. Well, within one business day. So if you if you do not see a reply and it has been a business day, please check your spam folder. And we are frequently in areas without cell phone reception. So if you do call us on the phone, you get our voicemail. If you want to return a phone call, please make sure you leave us a message. If you let, let us know which list you're looking at and what questions you have, soon as we either finish with the customer or return to cell phone range, we'll be able to get your message. And, Get all your uh, questions answered uh, on our return call. So here at our home station, we do have our um, shift and throttle control. That's for that uh, Merc Cruiser 3.0 liter inboard outboard. Uh, that is a four cylinder, inline four cylinder. Very fuel efficient. Single engine. We do have a working depth finder up here at your helm. We've got a rudder angle indicator gauge. We've got two, um, I believe they are 96 gallon aluminum fuel tanks. Uh, you're going to have a uh, gauge for either one of those. You'll be able to toggle that back and forth. Engine temperature gauge, tachometer, uh, battery voltmeter. Here's your um, engine hour meter and engine oil pressure over here. We've got several bilge pumps throughout the boat. Now the horn did not, well, horn wants to work. Might have some uh, cobwebs in there. And our depth finder is trying to get a reading here. It's not quite 366 feet. That'll probably come back down here in a few minutes after it kind of um, gets going again. We have a 12 volt power outlet up here and then that engine, uh, that Merc, Merc Cruiser 3.0 liter, uh, four cylinder inboard outboard engine is currently showing 2,589.7 engine hours. We're gonna round that up. We'll call it uh, 2,590. We do have a working VHF radio right here at your helm station. And then this would be your transfer switch to go from your shore power to your generator power. We've got a 12.5 kW Westerbeek generator on board, and it is showing about 3,728.8 hours. We'll round that up and call it 3,729. And depth finder starting to get a little bit closer, showing about 120 feet now, and that's that's actually uh, pretty close to uh, to how deep we are right now. Um, so we've got a 3,000 watt inverter. This is basically your remote panel for your inverter, so you can kind of see what it's doing. 
um, and that is showing 100% charge. We got a four battery bank for that. Now we do have a 32 inch Philips Roku HD television here in your salon area. I believe that's got a Blu-ray player with it as well. And then just overhead we have one of two roof air conditioning units. That is a Coleman TSR roof air conditioning unit. Ceiling fan overhead. We got a mix of uh, 12 volt lighting and 110 lighting throughout. That is a sleeper sofa here in the main living area as well. Um, I should call your attention. We do have a um, a stereo here. Now this stereo is not functional. Um, now just below it you've got four toggle switches. That is for zoned audio. You do have speakers and wiring ran. You basically have a set of speakers um, on that front porch where we started um, and two here in the main cabin. There's going to be two more back in the master stateroom and I believe two more out on the rear deck. So that is here if anybody wants, uh, if anybody, uh, wants to expand on that and add a um, stereo system or improve on that stereo system. Um, you've got the works of a um, zoned audio system. So that is the sleeper sofa right there in the center of your screen right now. And here in our galley kitchen, you can see we've got a small little L-shaped kitchen island, blender, um, toaster, double stainless sink, smooth top, frigid air oven and range, over the range LG microwave, there's a five burner smooth top range, and then we've got a frigid air stainless refrigerator and freezer, Mr. Coffee Coffee Maker, and you can also see we've got some nice upgraded, good looking uh, flooring right here in the kitchen area. Now this uh, dining table here does have some nice uh, integrated storage built in uh, to some cabinets just um, just underneath and I do want to point out that is not bolted down. Now it is quite heavy but that can be moved out away from the wall there. Now, right off the um, main living area, we do have a pocket door right here. You're going to have these pocket doors throughout. And this is for your first uh, four queen size bedrooms. You can see you basically got two steps up right here from the main living area. We've got a, a small hanging closet, cedar line hanging closet, overhead light. Again, that's a queen size bed. Step back down on the main level, continue back. And we've got your first. Um, um, actually, this is the uh, the full bathroom on the boat. We've got your your head. You've got your corner vanity, built-in medicine cabinet, and then a walk-in shower. Everything going north slate does, uh, as far as your toilets go, or your sewage, or your wastewater, that all goes into a waste holding tank. Do have some tiled floors in that uh, bathroom. We do have two 84 gallon aluminum waste holding tanks. And for your fresh water, we have four 84 gallon aluminum fresh water tanks. Now the pocket door here before we step down, this is going down into a, a double cutty. So I do want to point out, you can close that uh, door off right there at the top of the uh, the steps, right there in the hallway. Step down, we've got a small uh, hang closet right here. Now just to the forward. Queen size bed, lighting overhead. Oh, there's that lighting. And we got a small little 12 volt fan over here in the corner. Now we do have some uh, some moisture damage on this paneling just underneath this window here. That's a common area in just about uh, every houseboat, just about of all makes and models. We got some water damage inside of that cedar line closet as well. And then, um, actually, your, your rear cutty is not quite as bad. Now, this um, is often referred to as a crawl-in cutty. Now, um, this first one here, the forward one, you've got about six feet of headroom in this one. And you do have a privacy curtain that will close over and even kind of mag 
magnetically closes on the side there. Now the cutty to the uh, just to the rear is, as you can see, it's a little bit shorter. Um, I'm going to guess maybe about four feet of headroom in here. But again, this is often referred to as the crawling cutty. Same thing here. You got a little privacy curtain there, and that's going to uh, to close that off. The, otherwise, that is a queen bed. And you can see we've got a uh, carbon monoxide detector right there in the corner. Another 12 volt fan right here. Window over there, just overhead of that bed as well. So now we go up one, two, three, four steps. We're back up on the main level. And another pocket door right before you step back into your master stateroom. Master stateroom has its own um, Coleman roof air unit just overhead. Ceiling fan over top of your bed as well. And that's also queen size bed. So you've got four queen beds, one sleeper sofa, good size hanging closet here in your uh, master stateroom, and there's also a, um, a second uh, linen closet there in the hallway as well. Three uh, built-in dresser drawers right there on an end table or a nightstand. There's those um, speakers just overhead in your master stateroom that I referenced earlier. And then you can see you've got some, uh, some signs of some moisture intrusion around the base of that window. Now we are in the process of getting the um, the windows sealed and uh, recocked on this one, as well as the hole of the deck joint. Um, the hole of the deck joint on this one has allowed some water to get in. We're going to get into that here, here towards the end of the video tour. So do stick around if you're interested in this one. Make sure you watch this one all the way to, through uh, to the end. So uh, here's your uh, here's your half bath just off the master uh, stateroom here. You've got another tiled uh, tiled bath. There's your marine head, corner vanity sink, medicine cabinet overhead. Now the 284 gallon aluminum uh, waste holding tanks on this one, those should be switched over to plastic. That has not happened yet. Uh, so do keep that in mind. That that um, needs to needs to be done in the in the near future. Now we got uh, sliding glass doors gonna take us out to the rear uh, porch area. Where we'll raise these engine hatches. First one over here on the starboard side, this one basically houses your uh, your house batteries and uh, 30 amp. Onboard battery charger, battery switch, and this is one of two 96 gallon aluminum fuel tanks. I'm going to go ahead and let that one close. At 3.0 liter Merc Cruiser digital electronic ignition on this inline four cylinder engine it's right here in this center uh, engine hatch. Do have some uh, bilge water down there and that has collected because the uh, bilge pump back here in this engine hatch has um, discontinued to uh, to operate. So we're, we're also going to look to have that replaced as well as uh, one up in the bow as well. Uh, however, the one in the bow is is nice and dry. That is a uh, Halon Fireboy automatic fire suppression system right there mounted on the wall there. And again, about I think there was about 2,600 hours on that engine. And then here is a 12, 12 and a half KW Westerby generator back here in the engine room here. Now this uh, this generator is actually uh, has been repowered. This is I believe a uh, 2011 uh, Westerby generator. And then of course just forward of it is that other uh, 96 gallon aluminum fuel tank. And we've got a nice. Um, Integrated swim platform with a uh, three-step swim boarding ladder. You just fold that right over the uh, edge there. Use that to climb back in and go up and down on that water slide. I'm going to take this steps up to the rooftop. Roof uh, appears to be in good shape up here. And here you get a better look at this mooring location right here. You basically just two rows off the front line here. There's that water slide. And look at that swim platform as well. And of course here's that, that 12 by 50 foot covered patio on your dock. 
Having these rails around your uh, roof air units will help protect those and keep guests from sitting on those accidentally. Picnic table up here, that one got, has already had that plastic catlin kind of busted up a little bit. And the roof does appear to be nice and solid all the way around up here. There was a few areas I noticed. Um, actually, it looks like it's been it's been patched a little bit right in here. You see a little bit of cracking right there and some fiberglass fibers uh, showing through right there. That you do want to keep sealed. It looks like they've done it in a few areas. They may have had it done everywhere, but that's come off just a little bit. Uh, gel coat surface on this one does appear to be in good shape, but um, you want to keep an eye on stuff like this and, and, um, and reseal that just to prevent uh, moisture from working its way in through that uh, gel coat down into the fiberglass. So I'll go ahead and um, actually go down the uh, bow steps here. Now we do always like to call your attention to any um, areas of wear and tear. Now this is the hull of the deck joint and you can see how that seal has come, uh, across, um, or has come out basically and you've got a gap in there that needs to be sealed now this part of the boat is not quite as critical because you get a little bit of an overhang right there so that's not quite as um, prone to getting moisture and uh, intrusion in through there however come around the corner here um, this this side of the boat is basically exposed in the elements without an overhang and that hold the deck joint um, is overdue from having um, that resealed. Now, before I show you what has happened uh, with that, I do want to show you a peek down in our front hatch. This is where the, our uh, inverter battery bank is. Um, I believe I, I said there was a four bank, uh, a four uh, battery bank, and uh, miscalculated on that. Didn't I? That's actually a, a five battery bank. And and that's the uh, the other bilge pump I was referring to. I don't know if you can see it behind those batteries, but that one has failed and needs to be replaced. So because we um, have had that hull the deck joint kind of get neglected a little bit, it has done some damage on our walls and our floors in here. We've, we've basically got some signs of moisture intrusion. Of course, I showed you down in that cuddy room uh, where we had some paneling that had had some moisture uh, damage on it. So we've got the same thing going on in here in the living room um, on that paneling um, down there near where it meets um, that, that flooring. A little bit more moisture damage up here. Um, and of course you can also kind of see some obvious signs of moisture intrusion around those, those windows. The windows are uh, kind of prone to having uh, moisture work their way in for the same reason. It's because um, the exterior seal uh, does not get sealed up with caulking or um, it just has it on there from the factory and after about uh, three or four years that that is ready to be replaced and uh, when that is not done you're going to have areas like this showing up so we do kind of have that uh, most prevalent here on the port side of the cabin um, around your windows and down on your your flooring down near the floor now additionally uh, because we we did have some heavy moisture come in through here this in this living room area um probably this at least a foot um of this floor underneath the carpeting is rotten and additionally we're going to have some mold and mildew underneath all of that down in the cabin uh storage space which is what i'm going to show you now now as I mentioned, we are having all that sealed up. So once you can prevent moisture from coming back in, then you can get it all dried out um, by running the dehumidifier, which will be the next uh, step in this one, depending on um, when this is sold. And um, and then after the um, after it is no more uh, moisture comes in and it's completely dried out, 
uh, then you can run some ozone generators to help kill um, all the uh, the mold and mildew that you're going to see down here uh, down in the floor now you can also replace all that flooring uh, now while i'm here it's also a good time to point out our inverter this is our uh, 3000 watt um, ames uh, power inverter and you can see where that goes through that firewall right there where that battery bank was um, also over here we've got a, a quicksilver galvanic isolator that's right there below your power panel and of course you can see we've got areas of of um of some rot and uh, obvious signs of moisture intrusion um, that has taken place uh, those four um 84 gallon aluminum fresh water tanks that I referenced earlier. Those are all kind of right over here on the support side. We've got a 19 gallon electric water heater. And if you start to look up, that's where you're going to start seeing all that mold and mildew and, um, and even just uh, rotten uh, uh, plywood subfloor there. Now you see a little bit of a lip right there in about the middle of the frame. And that is where that, uh, there's, there's an aluminum edge on that exterior and that's right there where that hull of the deck meet um, as well on the exterior and when that hull of the deck joint is no longer sealed uh, water and moisture is going to start working its way in and you can kind of see that's what's taking place and then of course it's going to wick um, across your uh, your subfloor and can also wick up those exterior walls so like I said there is there is quite a lot of that down here And, um, and someone is going to have their work cut out for them down here, getting rid of all this. But um, as always, we do like to, uh, to show you all of our listings as accurately as possible. So we do want you to see what you're, uh, what's going to be involved on this one. And this is definitely not for everybody. And you can kind of also see over here, as we get closer to the edge here, that's where you got a lot of that uh, rotten uh, floor underneath that carpeting up there in the uh, in that living room. So, and now I'm basically, uh, what I'm showing you now is basically just your subfloor down here in your whole storage area. Okay, and that's basically just there to allow you to uh, to move around and, and to use this areas for uh, for storage and then also what's not being used for storage down here is being used for your uh, your plumbing um, and your electrical and things like that as you can see here we got a uh, one of your cabin bilge pumps We've got a little automatic float on it a little bit of water down in there but uh, those bilge pumps uh, will not suck all of that completely in dry now once we start getting our uh, dehumidifier running down in here that'll help get some of that out as well. Uh, now, since I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and show you another feature on this one, which is a, uh, a water maker system. So now our two, um, two aluminum 84 gallon waste holding tanks, those are back here. And like I said, those do need to be replaced and swapped out with plastic tanks. Um, aluminum's great for fresh water, but not so great with wastewater. So here is that, uh, this is a water fixer, ultraviolet. Uh, water sterilizer. We've got basically a two-stage filter, so you've got a stand pipe um, right over there. It's going to bring lake water up. It's coming through this uh, water pump right here, and it's going through two filters, and then going through the UV light, and then there's a second pump. It's basically going to take that water and uh, and plumb the boat with it. So that's what this valve right here will do. Uh, once you get that going, open that valve up, and you can just keep on making your own fresh water. Uh, seller of this one and then uh, continuing back past those uh, aluminum waste tanks or there's some more uh, moisture damage that's been accumulated uh, you got some in the floor in there and then uh, just overhead of where I'm at as well you've got a lot of that that mold and mildew from that water that's gotten in I uh, heard me mention you, you do have some of that on both sides of the boat now obviously the port side is worse because it's got just more exposure to the elements but it is also wet over here on the starboard side uh, just not quite as as heavy um, don't have the rot that you have on the floor over there on the on the port side just because uh, you got well basically you got a, um, a gutter um, alongside that covered roof on the dock that you're tied up to so it's catching a lot of that but it's not catching all of it you can see there's definitely still uh, mold and mildew um, on that plywood subfloor. 
So do have that um, that onboard uh, water maker and um, seller this one they they do like to use this one out in a cove and so um, at least for a few weeks every season they take this they head out to a cove with it and they stay out for uh, several weeks usually when you are staying out for an extended period first thing that you run out of is water so the ability to make your own can uh, really um, extend your your time out uh, on the water so that's going to do it for this one again this is the 1994 15 by 68 foot aluminum hull houseboat and 12 by 80 foot dock with the transferable mooring location at one of the more popular locations on Norris Lake and again you're going to want to visit the website for more information to come see this one in person submit an offer set up a showing um, or anything like that reach out to us and again for your convenience we will have a direct link for this one down in the video description down the written description is going to be a direct link you can copy and paste or you can click on it. it's going to take you right to the listing for this one at our website so you're not going to have to uh, search around for it and then of course you'll see the asking price right there as well as all of our contact information and don't forget if you do try to call us on the phone make sure you leave us a message uh, we do not have cell phone reception at all of our uh, marinas on the lake here and uh, and also if you've sent us an email be sure to check your spam folder for our reply because uh, chances are that's generally where it ends up but i thank you again for joining us again this is the 1994 lake view 15 by 68 foot loom hall wide body houseboat and dock for sale don't forget we got that uh full size washer and dryer included here on the dock and i thank you again for joining us Get a little bit of uh, vinyl that's peeled up here in the corner here. That um, uh, the original uh, paint job on this was probably covered up uh, with some um, a vinyl wrap. I'll show you that view from up top here just before we wrap up. And of course that yournewboat.com logo that pops up in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's just a shortcut to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, we're always happy to have you as a, as a subscriber. And I thank you again for joining us.